Hello, this video is the first in a series of videos that will walk through the setup of the Business Edition 6000 or B6K. This picks up after the initial setup of the C-Series server. At the end of the series, we'll have a fully functional B6K system. This video will go through the CUCM LDAP integration as well as the initial preparation of Communications Manager for the integration with Unique Connection, Contact Center Express, and Presence. So without further delay, let's get started. Before I get into the configuration, I want to point out a few things. As stated earlier, these videos will pick up after the initial setup of the C-Series server. If you're unfamiliar with that process and not sure on how the setup is, we have UCN UCS C-Series walkthrough videos on this channel as well. But quickly I'll go over the steps that need to be completed before you start this application configuration process. First, you're going to need to configure the CIMC or the Cisco Integrated Management Controller. Then you'll configure the RAID on the hard drives. Next, you'll need to install ESXi 4 on the server. At the making of this video, currently 4.0 and 4.1 are only supported. Once ESXi is installed and configured, you'll need to create a virtual machine for each of the applications using the Cisco provided OVF templates. Once those are complete, you'll finally have to install each of the UC applications into its own virtual machine. After those steps are completed, you can start on the configuration and integration as shown in these videos. Now I've connected to the CM administration web page and logged in. First let's go to the serviceability page and turn on the services we need. On the serviceability page go to tools then service activation. The servers that need to be started are the Cisco call manager, Cisco CTI manager, Cisco TFTP, Scroll down to Axel Web Service, and then finally Cisco Dersync. Once those are checked, we'll hit Save and click OK on the pop-up. Once those have started, we'll go back to the CM Administration web page. Next thing we'll do is, as with all installation, is take away the dependency on DNS. So first go to System, then Server. Now we'll come to hit Find. Then we'll click on the link for the server name. And then we'll go ahead and change the host name to its IP address. This will eliminate DNS dependency. Hit Save. We'll click OK on this warning. And then the change has been updated. So one last place to modify for DNS is in Enterprise Parameters. We'll scroll down about midway until you reach Phone URL Parameters. And then in each box change the server host name to its IP address. And since I'm only using unsecured links in this setup I won't change the secure phone URL parameters. But it wouldn't hurt if you change those as well. Once you have those changed, we'll hit the Save button. Okay, now that we're done with that, we'll get into the LDAP integration. For that, we'll go to System, then down to LDAP, and then LDAP System. Once we're on this page, we'll check this box here to enable synchronization from LDAP server. Everything else is fine, so we'll click Save. Next, we'll go back to the System menu, back to LDAP, and then choose LDAP Authentication. On this page, we'll check the box next to Use LDAP Authentication for End Users. And then we'll type in the path for the user account, which will grant authentication request. And then put in the password as well. In this setup, I'm using the default administration account that's on Active Directory. And if you don't have access to that account, you'll need to create a separate admin account that you can control. All the user accounts that we're using for this setup is located in the Users Organizational Unit. So we'll go ahead and put the path in for that. If yours is different, you'll need to put in a different path. And then finally, we'll put the IP address of the Active Directory server in this box here. Once we're done with everything, we'll go ahead and click Save. And then our final setup for LDAP is we'll go to LDAP and set up the LDAP directory. 
once in there we'll go ahead and click add new we'll go ahead and click OK on this box here which is basically saying if you have any users in the CUCM directory that are not in the corporate directory they will be erased so we'll click, click OK so the directory page looks very similar to the authentication page we'll just put the configuration name MSAD we we'll use the same account administrator account on the active directory and put the password in for the administrator account search base all our search all our users are in the users OU so we'll go ahead and put the path to that and we'll scroll down to the bottom here and put the IP address of the Active Directory server. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and click Save. Now we can see that the ad was successful. And we'll go ahead and do a full sync by clicking this button here. Go ahead and click OK on this pop up. Okay, now that we've synced, we'll go ahead and come up here to User Management check on the end users and see if they successfully synced click find and we've got a couple users in here so the sync worked so now that we've got our users in here let's go ahead and go to user management then user group we're gonna go ahead and click find and what we're doing is we're gonna add all these users to the standard CCM in user group so they can have access to the user web page so we'll click on CCM end user and then we're going to go ahead and add end users to group we'll go ahead and check user 1 and user 2 and then click add selected next we'll go back to the user groups and since we are integrating with presence later we're going to go ahead and modify the standard CTI enabled group and put both of our users in there for presence purposes so we'll go ahead and click on standard CTI enabled click on add in users to group we'll select our two users and click add selected next thing we'll do is some user device association so we'll go to end users we'll click on user 1 and we'll scroll down to controlled devices and click device association in here we'll click find and since we do have a couple of phones already created we're going to select the one for user 1 which is CIPC1 and we'll click save selected changes now we'll go back and change user 2 as well we'll go ahead and hit go a couple times on the related links this time we'll select user 2 scroll down again to control devices device association and this time we'll select CIPC2 and save selected changes so the last thing we're going to do is some align associations so in order to do that we'll go to the devices so we'll click device phone click find we have our two devices here we'll click on CIPC1 and then the line number which we have is 3001 scroll down to the bottom to the users associated with this line click on associated in users user 1 is associated here we'll click add selected then we'll click save and we'll go back and do the same thing for user 2 so CIPC2 it's going to be associated in line 1 with user 2 go ahead and scroll down associate in users check the box for user 2 add selected and then we'll click save that completes the initial configuration for communications manager the next video in the series will walk you through the unity connection integration